All right, guys, good morning. We are uh, wrapping up our ninth week at the Iron Yard. I'm bringing you episode number nine of Bus Stop Blogs, uh, where each week I give you a recap of what we've been up to at the Iron Yard. So uh, we are now in our language specialization, uh, and where we can either choose React, Ruby, or Java. Uh, I went with React um, because front end just feels like home to me. Um, back end is kind of fun. Uh, full stack is definitely fun, but uh, back end by itself, I, I would not want to do that for a job. So uh, I decided to go with React. I still want to learn Java um, kind of on my own at, at some point down the road, but because um, I think it'd be cool to get into like some serious mobile app development uh, knowing Swift and Java, you know, so um, that's kind of a, a somewhat short term goal for me, uh, like within the next two years or so. Um, but anyway, uh, it's it's been a good week. So um, with with our react assignments, um, you know, we've had we've been doing rack for a couple days now. And we started the week really just kind of focusing on like higher order functions and uh, well, not really higher order functions, but like prototypal inheritance. Um, and that was good, you know? Um, it was some stuff that uh, I've kind of studied before, um, have, I've had good conversations with friends about it before. Um, and basically what prototypal inheritance is just to kind of um, be brief about it. It's basically like, imagine if you had a constructor, um, like a class constructor of car, right? So, um, off of this constructor, you could make new cars. It could be, uh, or to make it more broad, we'll say vehicle, right? So, um, off of vehicle, you could then make um, a car or a truck or a motorcycle or, or whatever and so you might have like basic properties on vehicle uh, such as like four wheels um, you know you might have like uh, the size of the engine you might have a method uh, called drive we'll talk more about methods in just a second um, but the basic principle is that any constructor that you build off of that constructor so like if you make a, uh, a car constructor or a truck constructor off of the vehicle constructor then all of those uh, classes inherit the properties and methods off of the parent class and so um, and then you can override it so like obviously if the uh, vehicle class did uh, had like a property of four wheels uh, or a, a property of wheels set to four and then you created the motorcycle constructor off of that well <laughs> naturally you don't want your motorcycle to have four wheels that would just be weird so you can once the constructor like the child uh, constructor is made then you can redefine a property so you could say um, you know, uh, like class motorcycle um, extends off of a vehicle or equals new vehicle. Um, and then as you're defining the motorcycle, you say this dot wheels equals two. Um, and then that sets that property for you. So then for that point moving forward, any motorcycle you create will have two wheels instead of four. So that's the, the kind of the entry level understanding of prototypal inheritance. Um, additionally, with, with methods, so a method is just a function on an object. Um, every object or every uh, class that you make has a, a prototype attached to it. So you can, you can go up one level from from where you are so um, like this this vehicle class uh, there would be a 
vehicle dot prototype uh, on which you could could do things so for example if you wanted a method called drive um, it might actually be better to store that on the prototype and here's why if you say if when you first de define the vehicle constructor and you p attach the drive method to that constructor then every instance of a vehicle from then on out every time you create a vehicle from that constructor or any of the child constructors then all of those instances will have that drive method on it so now you've got this method stored in multiple places um, in your code which takes up a lot of memory and it's unnecessary instead what you can do is put it on the prototype so you would go like vehicle dot prototype dot drive or whatever you know and then all of a sudden and then you define what that function does and then all of a sudden it's on it's stored on that prototype every instance or child class of vehicle does not have that method stored to itself in its own place and memory but instead it's going to be passed by reference so that all of those child instances have access to that method without actually having to store it in its own location so um, that's pretty cool uh, kind of a, a neat trick about prototypal inheritance so we spent the first day or two kind of doing that um, and then we really got into some react um, I like react a lot uh, a whole lot basically the gist of it is you've got so with every website you know you've got some sort of nested structure to it um, when it comes to the dom and so what react does is you take that dom structure i, I apologize if it's hard to hear me right now the wind just picked up quite a bit i hope i don't get rained on um, the dom naturally has a nested structure to it and so you take that structure and you break it out into smaller components and typically whenever you're working on a react site you always want to go from the outside in or you could think of it more appropriately from the top down uh, so going back to this kind of parent child uh, relationship your outermost components those are the ones that are going to control state so state is basically um, like what's going to what's going to change uh, in in your app and so um, you might have data stored in there somehow if it's not a large amount of data um, or just things that are going to change on the page everything that you want to be dynamic you use use state for that and then state can be passed down through the children or to the children through props and so um, it's kind of hard to explain how that works but uh, props is basically just short for properties um, and so you can pass properties down to children and then you can put uh, like synthetic events on on uh, components or elements in those children components and then lift the state back up to the parent level um, and and that can go as many levels as as you want or need it to go it's not just like one parent and one child thing but properties can only be passed down uh, they can't be passed up so just like in real life uh, you can't a parent can't inherit things from their child it works the same way in react so anyway I like react a lot um, you know it's been cool learning about 
things like two-way data binding and just learning how all that works. Um, we've been doing some data fetching, um, which has been cool. Um, I've also been trying to learn Angular as well, um, just kind of on the side, not as in quite as intensely as React. I'm definitely ahead of, of what we're doing in React right now. Um, and that's, that's been my goal this entire course is just always be ahead uh, so I can get the most out of it. Um, so I'm, I'm studying React fairly intensely. Um, Angular, I'm kind of doing that on the side because I think it's, it'd be a cool skill to have. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to do Angular or React, but I think that probably React would be my go-to uh, if I were given the choice. So it just, it makes sense to me, you know? Um, Angular, Angular for some reason, it just, it takes, it takes a lot more, um, I don't know, you just have to like assign components in a lot of different places, it seems. It, some things in there just seem unnecessary that, that React solves. So um, I don't know, I'm not an expert, but um, from the short amount of time that I've been doing Angular and React, I definitely like React a whole lot better. Um, I'm going to keep learning Angular though. Um, the weirdest thing I found in Angular so far is data fetching. Um, so I, I'm basically I'm taking all of our assignments that we're doing in React and I'm able to get them done pretty quickly. So then I'm going back and doing them a second time but in Angular. And uh, our assignment from yesterday had some data fetching in it and you can't just use, at least if you can, I don't know how to do it. Um, you can't just use the standard fetch method to get your data for Angular. You've got to do something a little bit different. And so I'm using something called HTTP client. Um, and I have the data, but it's not on the page. So I got to figure out how to get it onto the page. So I'm working through that. Um, I know in, in general how to get it onto the page, like if the data is not being pulled in through an API. Um, I've done that, like I've been able to loop through it with like star ng4, but um, I don't know, got to figure out how to, how to get this data that I pulled from an API onto the page. So, so something's going wrong in the code. So I got to figure that out. I'm going to work on that this morning. But um, anyway, it's been good. Uh, it's been a good week. I had an interview yesterday. Um, I think it went pretty well. There were a couple of answers that like I definitely knew the answer to but I uh, in the moment I basically forgot that I knew the answer so um, you know I, I wasn't able to answer or at least I answered in a different way um, and but I was able to follow up and yeah we'll see how it goes um, I, I'm, I don't feel don't feel too bad about it but um, I've got some other things uh, planned as well so anyway just got to the iron yard uh, thanks for watching. See you next week.